Hutton Orbital News, the unexpected chart of news programmes. Orbital Radio News. Tune in every Thursday and get the horn. It's all hands to the pumps at Hutton this week. Commanders have rushed out to buy Achilles FSDs, plonk them straight into their ships and hit the newly installed Super Cruise Overdrive button, hoping to be the new fastest Hutton runner. What they haven't considered is that those things run hot really hot. Hotter than a Carolina Reaper's armpit in July. Don't get me wrong, they're making good time, but the manner of their arrival does not inspire confidence in either the pilots or the technology. They drop out of supercruise and turn towards the station like a drunk comet, open the comms and start screaming about emergency landing permission. The fire crews are taking the brunt of it, but Everyone's pitching in to take the pressure off. Gusto the Clown has been doing his bit, although the other volunteer firefighters did have to point out that the tiny plastic fireman helmet, giant yellow trousers and oversized wellies with domed toe caps weren't really suitable for fighting fires on a space station. Throwing buckets of confetti at the fire did not help either. Uh, well, we say confetti, it was mainly a bundle of court summons and court summonses and dodgy financial records he was later taken away by security after trying to extinguish a burning pilot with a very small hose although he protested that it wasn't that small and the water had been cold McFargoids have cashed in on the craze with their overdrive burger which is really just a burnt tentacle burger in a well-fired roll from the Scottish Isle of the local supermarket the smell of burnt lightweight alloy and overcooked bacon wafts into the parade as the commander as a commander bursts through the door like his hair is on fire. Because his hair is on fire. Luckily, floor mopping guy is on hand and tips his water bucket over the immolated commander's head. As grey water, cigarette ends, discarded sweetie wrappers, and the occasional blob of concreted chewing gum slide down his face, he leans close to the floor mopping guy grabs him by the lapels and says, Our mics alive! Good evening. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. We're all a bit frazzled tonight as flaming commanders have been docking at Hutton all day, piling out of their ships in gaudily stained undercrackers, and proudly, yes, proudly, pronouncing themselves to be the new Hutton Run champion. I'm Rudolf Hucker, and I'm hiding here in Studio 6 until I can find the eye bleach. No one should have to see the things that I've seen today. You're on fire this evening. Years of practice. No, no, no. You're literally on Ooh. fire. Well, he did take the new Hutton fast bus. They're still extinguishing it on the pad. When will you lot learn not to leave it too close to the show? Time to arrive. Uh, probably never. Anyway, especially now that someone's shaved a few minutes off the Hutton run. But uh, more on that soon. But first, possibly, maybe, if the buttons are in the right order, some headlines. 
Humble hauler, heave hose, hut and run. A bigger, better box of buttons? Wish granted. Compared to the new drive, too hot, too messy is tepid. But the runs are scorching. Dr Mick gets a shock from a fuzzy mic and two ladies in frocks. And Hutton's expanded inappropriately. Again. With the release of the new overcharged frameshift drive, brackets only available in Class C, brackets, by the Achilles Corporation, commanders throughout the galaxy headed to the nearest high-tech system to part with a few credits for the privilege of being one of the first to own one of these newfangled go-faster doohickeys. And of course, work out what all the fuss was about. That would help if I put the right image up, wouldn't it? There we go. <coughs> um, as reported in last week's show, the Hutton Boffins were scratching their heads about exactly what was entailed in using one of these drives. Was it a passive effect that made you go a mite faster? Was there a magic go faster button that shot you into the middle of next week? And what were the drawbacks? Most importantly, given all the effort in obtaining one of these things, was it all worth it? To answer that last question first, from our perspective and that of the legendary Alec Turner, most definitely yes. We'll get to why in a minute. Before we go into the details, picture a scene. A girl, standing by a window at the civilian installation somewhere between the jump point at Alpha Centauri A and Proxima Centauri. It's just by Alpha Centauri B1. Anyway, she looks on in wonder at a fiery streak across the sky. Is that a shooting star, Daddy? She asks. Can I make a wish? Her dad glances up and says... No, dearest, that's not a shooting star. That's a Hutton trucker. This brings us to the first of the first feature of the new drives. Commanders making the fabled Hutton run, or at least those that remembered their Hutton mug, are used to a nice warm beverage en route as a result of the frameshift energies warming their mug just enough. Each Hutton mug has just enough material from salvaged drive plates of ships that didn't make it to achieve the perfect cuppa. What they're not used to is pointing the nose of their ship towards Hutton, firing up the overcharged drive and having their Hutton mug melt through the bulkhead. These drives run hot, really hot, and the amount of fuel that they use is measured not in light seconds per gallon, but in light seconds per tonne, or maybe bananas per cubic centimetre. Hutton truckers and buckyball legends attempting the trip have taken to outfitting every square banana of their vessel with heat sinks, big fans and blocks of ice to be able to keep the overcharged thing doing its thing as far as they can in the direction of Hutton. Whilst all the while it's sucking on the fuel reserves like a kid at a McDonald's milkshake. And all too soon there's that gurgling noise as the straw surfaces for air and there's nothing left in the bottom of the cup. For those that do have enough heat sinks and enough fuel and enough enthusiasm, this has posed an entirely new challenge. Exactly how fast can a commander make it to Hutton using one of these? And will they survive the journey? Those ships which don't make it are, unfortunately, not being salvaged and turned into Hutton mugs, as we're currently unsure whether anyone wants Thargoid goo impregnated crockery aboard their ship. Other than LCU, of course, who lives for such things. More later in this broadcast about whether anyone's made it here yet. But for the time being, and until the community goal appears, to upgrade the drives with big stick-on heat sinks and a bit of aircon, or can be engineered up the wazoo with cooling by Felicity Farsier, a bevy of commanders are out there attempting to break the record, and unlike a normal hut and run, where you've got time to have a bath, do the dishwasher, and watch an episode of your favourite soap opera, with the overcharged, overdriven overdrive, you need to keep both hands on the stick at all times.
In an entirely unexpected and absolutely welcome development, alongside their freshly released super duper Achilles Acme Division Wily e. Coyote, Coyote strapping a rocket between his legs and lighting the blue touch paper frameship drive, the Pilots Federation delivered one of the longest outstanding requests from pilots in the galaxy. No, not open only power play, and no, not spaceship interiors. Buttons. Lots of buttons. More buttons than there are days in half a year. A squillion buttons. One whole bunch of bananas of buttons. For commanders with more digits than pi and a better memory than a Delta Pavonian Titano Elephant called Mr. Ploppy. Don't ask, just look it up on EDSM. They can have a big box of buttons that puts every command at your finger or thumb tips, maybe even under your feet. Yes, there are now no limits on how buttony the hob fob, um, the, the Hun orbital box full of buttons can be more buttony than your grandma's cake tin full of coat buttons, even more buttony than button moon. There's even room for a button to operate the coffee machine, lock the doors, eject uh, dissident passengers, and for those that get lonely out there in space, phone your mum. We've been looking back over a number of the other outstanding issues and are looking forward to updates that include a fix for that dangly cable in everyone's anaconda, deep canyons, where did they go? That strange mouse squeaky noise when you adjust your seat. And of course, that old favorite, Who's drumming on a keyboard during the radio show? We're on week 88 of Too Hot Too Messy's epic mission to deliver Hutton mugs and Centauri Megagen to... well, everywhere. Last week, topped off at 1,125 mugs and 967 gin deliveries, so the blistering pace has been maintained for another week. Total mug and gin deliveries are not, for sh not far short of 130,000 each. That's an astonishing effort. As predicted by Commander Norbert Patenard, sorry, as predicted, Commander Norbert Patenard has joined the 1000 Club. Felicitations, Commandant. Bien joué. Commander Noddy is placed well to be the next member admitted to their illustrious company, and with 992 each of mugs and gin delivered, he hasn't far off. The rest of Slade will be so proud. We're down a bit on deliveries this week, with mugs sitting around the 390 mark and gin at around 340. We have had a patch day though, so slightly lower numbers are to be expected. Traffic's picking up a Hutton. It may be discounted cocktails at Fat Ernie's, or the smell of Hutton guided tour. We uh, don't know why, but we're happy to see more commanders making the trip. The approaches are busy and landing pad availability is rated as good for small ships and low to moderate for medium ships. The new Super Cruise, Super Cruise Overdrive FSD has set a new standard for hut and run times, with initial efforts leading commanders knocking huge chunks off the previous overdrive records of 1 hour 22 minutes and 20 seconds, which Commander Hardy has held since January 3307. This week we welcomed 12 commanders. The top five were Happy Moon Monkey in 1 hour 6 minutes and 10 seconds, Ephaphus at 1 hour 9 minutes and 26 seconds, Afrothos 1 hour 10 minutes 50 second seconds, Attic 2 1 hour 18 minutes and 0 seconds, and Core Badger at 1 hour 23 minutes and 8 seconds. So slightly outside of the original record. Never mind, keep trying. With honourable mentions for Norbert Patenard, Beeple Jude, John Fitt, Artie Fishkel, Ascop, Christian R and Carbocetti. How you made those times without frying your ships to a blackened husk is a mystery to us here on the orbital. Oh, breaking news, the record's been broken again. The one hour five minute barrier has fallen. To a newcomer to the top of the table, Commander Delrin, in one hour, four minutes, 46 seconds. Will the one hour barrier be broken by the end of the week? We certainly think so. Special commiserations to Commander Carbuggety, who appears to have had to stop for a number of reboot and repair sessions, and then limp to Hutton in a plausible but very casual time of 3 hours 9 minutes and 40 seconds. 
also known as one of the Lord of the Rings movies. Special effect systems, accessibility champions throughout space, specialising in the super special control methods to enable absolutely anyone to pilot a spaceship, regardless of how they pilot it, physical limitations be damned, are being honoured over in the Empire tonight. A special award for the super special super special effect systems is being accepted by Dr. Mick the 15th, great 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 many times great grandson of the original Dr. Mick. Luminaries across the galaxy, from the mega corporations such as Achilles, Brewer Corporation and Sirius, the various spaceship manufacturers and of course the Pilots Federation's very own Brabenator are in attendance, many of them hoping to scoop plaudits for best sounding frameshift drive, which we all know is a complete shoe in for the Achilles Corporation, best offset cockpit view, here's looking at you Falcon de Lacey, and the Zachary Rackham Award for most pointlessly expensive mobile phone, which bookies would have it and despite competition from Dura drives, will be yet again to Apple. Here at Hutton, we're very proud to be supporters of special effects and all they do, as we have been for many, many years. It's also a testament to the work that they do that smaller organisations such as special effects are even in with the chance of awards. They don't make bazillions of credits selling something, they aren't providing epic voiceovers for bullying selling computer games like Booger's Gate or Heck Drivers, but they are making the galaxy more accessible to everyone and are a shining beacon of the kind of thing that should be on it. Dr. Mick looks incredibly dapper, though we suspect that the donation envelope we sent to the charity to have him casually drop for the mug when interviewed on the red carpet may not have arrived. He'll put it to good use though, setting someone up with eye control or some cool foot pedals to fly a spaceship with. Well, the expansion in Hutton Space is over for the moment and we have landed somewhere new. LHS-3351 is a busy system with lots of large stations, including Bentham Dock, which contains its namesake Jeremy Bentham, whose 1,478-year-old stuffed body sits in a wood and glass cabinet in the flight control office and covers the tea breaks. Contrary to popular belief, he does not attend station management meetings and his head has never been used for zero-g volleyball in Hangar 12. It was Hangar 21. Since the EG Union are already in control of the system, uh, we will most likely give it a miss, although it has an Earth-like planet for Alvin to go walkies. At the top end of the influence scale, the Elastic's ready to go in Georgie's pants at nearly 71%, and the locals are strangely elated. LP245-10, LP532-81, Wolf124, Wolf1481 and Wolf562 are all over our influence threshold of 60%. Don't pick at them, you'll make them worse. In the middle, with green lights and no alarm bells, we have Hagho, Wolf359, Alpha Centauri, PSPFLF2, Wolf25. Lighten 145-141, Hill Pass C, LP525-39, Wise 08550714, LHS340, don't even think about it. Kukari, Epsilon Eridani, Trepin, 36 off Yuchi, now only moments away by Super Cruise Overcharge, Van Manis Star, and Minge Cut. Needing some love this week, Ross671, Epsilon Indy, where the bourbon comes from, Narenses, Stein2051, Burner Star, where the pilots take their eye test, Havoc, LHS450, Wolf294, BD074419, G99-49, I mean, EDF are also in that system, but, you know, it's EDF, so who cares? The rest are all a bit rubbish, so just leave them. If you want to shout, truck it, then go to BD074419, where we are in an election. When you get there, run missions for Hutton. 
There's no point bringing commodities yet as we don't own a station there. If you want to shoot stuff, then pop across to G99-49 and shoot it there. We're in a war with G99-49 Life Industry, which sounds like an insurance company to me. Give them a beam laser up the loss adjustment from Hutton and ruin them no claims bonus. And that's it for the headlines. It's, hey. it's us. <laughs> We're on for a lot of It's a bit smoky in here. <coughs> oh, crikey. Oh, jeez. <coughs> yeah. yeah. My goodness. Did anybody watch that video of um, Alec Turner attempting to make the Hutton run in a... I think it was a cutter, wasn't it? And with 600 tonnes of fuel and he just... And all... I mean, all of the heat sinks. And he managed it to 0.18 light seconds left before he ran out of fuel. <laughs> uh, he was running enough heat sinks that he could actually run the um, overcharge constantly. Wow! I was yeah. going to say because you can't land that at Hutton, can you? No, no. So no. you know, it, it was all in the name of science or something. But yeah. uh, anyway, um, well, all in it's, the name it's, of barbecue. It's, it's us for the studio now. Eagle-eyed viewers might notice on the live stream, obviously not if you're listening on radio, um, that the very top of the screen seems to have six people on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's an Amelia with, with her cybernetic eye. There's Flossie looking very stern. There's Mia with lots of static. There's a rather sultry-looking litho breaker, and then there's a Volcarius. That's a beardy guy that isn't you. Yeah, there's a beardy guy that isn't me. It's Volcarius, who has joined us in the studio again. Doesn't have access to the script. We we haven't we haven't let him do that, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> All the crayons to colour it in. But good evening, Volcarius, and thank you for joining oh, us again. Good, oh, good evening, Hutton Orbital. And, you know, no script, no seams. No, no, well, no seams on seams. your part. There are Don't worry, seams. you can always manage to find seams without a script. Oh, yeah. We do it every week. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yes, Volcarius, before Yo. we go on to anything Thargoid related, have you tried out the new drive? Oh, oh yes, of course I have. <laughs> and and where you. from and where to and how far did you get before you blew up? Uh, oh no, I don't know. I didn't blow up. I uh, uh, it was uh, well, it, I was just flying around our fleet carriers. Uh, so I, I haven't used it for anything substantial. Uh, but the uh, not, not for escaping heat... from Thargoids, getting to them quicker without getting hyperdicted, interdicted, or anything else. Well, that's um, that is going to be useful um, for what we're doing. It's not so we do control systems. We just drop like not right next to the star but you know a light second or so away we don't really need <laughs> that's the super cruise overcharge <laughs> what well, other uh, than but, for other but, than for um, ships and giggles uh well we drop and then let thargoids come to us that's the, that's the purpose <laughs> i'll just sort um, of you moon them out the front window go no 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 what a terrible thargoid yep. you are <laughs> yes come on have yeah, a go if you think we, you're hard enough um but it is going to be very very useful for um, firstly, anyone going for signal sources. Um, some people, even in control systems, they like to go for signal sources. Um, if if you can get like a, a if you can catch a scythe, for example, um, that's a quick kill. Um, and in alerts, of course, um, authoresses. If you sacrifice um, something for some heat sinks, of course. Yeah. Um, although, well, many. Um, I mean, most. I imagine most people fighting Thargoids already have fairly quiet ships. Um, it's kind of a. Fighting Thargoids at all is really a heat game from the start. So most commanders are probably going to be on top of their heat already. Um, even the well, the classic ones will be um, very aware about um, like using um, uh, the thing with the shields and the and your signal goes out. Silent running, um, using silent running to overheat themselves. Um, so they'll they'll be on top of their heat. Oh, so um, I suppose you could go into super cruise and then overheat yourself using the overcharge drive to get rid of caustic damage. Yeah, uh, well, if you've yeah, if you if you've got the presence of mind to do all of that, yes. <laughs> and escaped a Thargoid you failed to kill, then and you're you've got Corsic on you, absolutely, yeah, um, you can you can use that. Um, you <laughs> well, well just, you, you <laughs> shoot away into the distance, going. <laughs> yeah, um, probably more efficient just to drop and use silent running and boost everywhere, but mm, one way or the other. Um. Yeah, I, I can I, I can see that. Yes. Yes, but now you're confusing efficiency with fun. 
Yes, I was, just, a, I was just about to say the exact same thing. <laughs> oh, it, it is fun. Yeah, it is absolutely. It's a lot of fun. It is yeah. outrageous. It's, it's a bucking bronco. I mean, you strapping yourself to the big rocket, uh, and off you go. I mean, it's it, it sort of whirling, whirly gigging its way through space. As it yeah. bonds you. <laughs> well, like I said, I mean, our ships are, they've all got a power plant, some heat protection, um, so they... Sacrificial, takes, sacrificial fuel tanks. And... <laughs> well, it 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 takes like by the time you hit a hundred heat, um, you've kind of already used half your fuel for our for uh, wow. for our purposes. So, and that's really the time when you want to like flick it off and then you consider <laughs> using the other half of the fuel to get back. So, <laughs> I'd I'd also have I'd be very sorely tempted to have on my stream deck a button that plays the song "Feeling Hot, Hot, Hot." Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or Scorpio, dis or Disco Inferno, Burning Ring of Fire. Yeah, I was thinking. If, I was if thinking only we could play music on this show like we used to. Oh dear! If only we could. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the, the the memes coming out. I mean, we did see the uh, the Wiley Coyote one of him sort of sitting astride a rocket and lighting it. Uh, we also saw the classic Spaceballs ludicrous speed now, yes. which is designed for this you know my brains are going mm -hmm. into my feet you know, <laughs> They've buckle, gone buckle up <laughs> buckle this <laughs> you know um yeah i mean that that the whole scene from uh, spaceballs has basically been translated into a module in elite dangerous yeah, they've gone mm -hmm. to plan included mm. um, that's what, that's what you need though when you hit your uh... Yeah, Super Cruise Overdrive is just for the whole sky to go tartan. Yes, well, I do. I do like the additional warning about the extreme damage you'll experience if you do an emergency stop while it's running. Have you seen that one? You know, a normal stop while your Super Cruise is running, like a, a, a fast stop, does a little bit of damage. This actually yeah. warns you catastrophic damage. Well, I like it's, that. It's not quite that bad. Um, so I know, like two thousand Cs, or or always done more damage than 2C but if you're going at like 3500 do we know uh, what the not... yeah the top top speed is yet on that yeah you can calculate it cuz um, if you look at each so each of the different drives of the different classes they have a stat on them they have an attribute uh, which is the speed the extra speed percentage so what you'll find is that i believe the class 4 is 100% more that's kind of like the baseline Whoa. As you go above that, so the bigger ones, so the class five frame shift drive is only eighty percent more. Um, but if you go back to class four, so hundred percent more, you're talking four thousand C. Um, and the smaller ones, the three and the two, um, you get. Uh, I can't remember the specific numbers, but there's like a forty-eight percent something like that in there. Uh, sorry, mm. a one four eight percent in there somewhere. And uh, uh, here's, here's oh, go ahead. Here's a thought though: if you were just going to be flying it in system, like you know, you import it into system, and then it's maybe like your fighter or something like that. And you're going to fly it about. You could just put like a size one or two FS. I don't know if you can get a size you can, one. No, you no, no. A... They stop. They stopped you doing that. So you, you oh. for the for the uh, Super Cruise Overcharge uh, Drive, you have to fit the class that matches your ship. Oh, well, that's rubbish. I know. But my first thought was, yeah, can it's... we put? Can we get a Python, fill it full of fuel, and give it the class two, <laughs> and then get all <laughs> the way? Because anyway, then it would with burn less. Fuel as well. It it does, yeah. So you, you can yeah. totally do it in a sidewinder um, if you're in because yeah, the um, the the, um, the the C rated ones are the the best typically the best all rounders, aren't they? Yeah, C so is kind it of was all is it um, A is A is A A is high performance but high power draw and high cost and such. Yeah. B is heavy uh, B, as a tank. Heavy, yeah, so high capacity, high capacity, and also higher range limpets. Oh, yes. Yep. Um, B, B, C uh, totally is all round. Uh, yeah. D, D, yeah. D is most efficient. It's lightweight. It's lightweight. Yeah. Yeah. Light, yeah. yeah. And E is E is low power draw. But you can't engineer cheap. them, so they are very e, limited. Yeah. yeah. They're no, they're no good for people that want to engineer them and take them to Felicity Fast here and and get dirty drives or um, clean drives or drag drives or whatever it is you you want to get on them. So they can't that, that currently would... <laughs> be engineered. <laughs> that would be thrusters. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, thrusters. No, you're right. I think yeah. you mean. I think you mean. So mass uh, manager. Mass manager. Um, that's the one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. A deep charge. I mean, you, well, there, you there must be. That. You must be able to get a clean drive mod for this one. You know, just to... you stack. You stack all that, and you'll hit the switch, and the, your whole ship will just explode. <laughs> Boom! Self destruct <laughs> button. Yes. Yeah. Actually, is it quicker than the self destruct button if you just hold it down? I wonder. No. No, oh. I, I mean, I used it to burn up to 200% heat, but 200 is really not that much. Uh, you're like, it's not going to kill you. Well, I, I, I did notice a certain uh, commander who shall remain uh, unnamed, <clears throat> Paul Watson, um, who was trying to do some video footage for uh, for, for some of his HCS packs. I thought, because we, we managed to get a patch out within two hours for, for this new drive. So he was getting video footage for that as well. And... Um, you know, did the did the boosty thing, saw the damage and the heat coming in, you know, saw that he could fire heat sinks, all these things he could do in super cruise, so um to fix the damage rebooted and repaired. While he was in super cruise. <laughs> yep. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops indeed. That does not end well. So can we tell tell everybody now a warning for you. Don't mistake your super cruise for being in normal space or the wrong kind of drives like I just did and try and reboot and repair without actually dropping out first because bad things happen. If you've not tried it, try it in something cheap like a side. Oh one. yes, I have. <laughs> yes. Oh dear whoops a daisy bang. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried it once just to, in the name of science. A bit like I tried one of those escape pods aboard the um, aboard the carrier once, just just for fun, just to see what happened. Um, it's quite fun. Um, so, well, thank you for that, um, Vulcarius. And now, Flossy. I mean, my thinking is that uh, while it's good, there is potential for future CGs to make it better. Any sniffs or hints on this one that there might be forthcoming CGs to, you know... Uh, no, maybe I've make them a little bit less explosive. I've not heard anything so far, unfortunately. I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> but no. I'm well, I mean, sorry. Achilles Corporation have made themselves exceedingly wealthy in a short space of time. Do we know how much these things cost? I mean, they're, they're, they're not cheap, are they? I mean, they're not um, carrier expensive, but they're, they're not cheap. Let's have a... No, I, I, I know I bought one uh, yesterday... Um, uh, about, about a million, I think, or something. Oh, okay. So, so proper cheap then, like one space plant. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, we got a price on this one. The five C is five hundred and sixteen thousand credits. I think that's at Shinrata. Yeah, that's still not dear. That's not it. Yeah, man, after I've prices. Man was one and a half oh. million at Shinrata. So you'd have been on, the... a, on a on a six then. Six, yeah. Yeah. What's the price of the? You got the price the of the two C. <laughs> The what? Have you got the price of the class two C? Uh, uh, I'm just trying to see whether I've got any prices. The seven C is five point seven million. Um, have I got prices on anything else? Let's have a look. Uh, it doesn't look like I've got prices on the other ones handy here. Nope. No other prices yet, but but somewhere if it's five hundred thousand for the for the five, yeah, I mean you, you're talking one to two hundred thousand, I would imagine. Yeah, it's Just not a, that opening uh, ED shipyard or what, what's known as a pocket change to some people. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I mean that that was exciting, but there were other things in the update as well because there was no frontier live stream, but there was a patch, and there were mm. there were other things in the patch. Um, so uh, I'm just calling it up at the moment on the bulletin board. Here we go. Um, no, that's people complaining that there's no pa Yeah, there was one person who decided to complain that they were expecting something much more from the major feature rework this year than a faster frame shift drive. At which point there was a galactic <laughs> face palm. That no, that's not it, mate. So, so the the Hutton box, but the 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 hob fob. Up to 128 buttons on one controller. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Rob has been after that for ages. He kept complaining to me. Why well, can't I do more than 32 buttons? Well, to, to give you an idea, <laughs> the, the issue ID in terms of the report ID for recent stuff, like not being able to add experimental effects to pre-engineered 5A FSD modules, is issue ID 63,452. This is issue ID... 1,763. That tells you how old that one is. <coughs> uh, yeah. 
Um, so, like so yes, it is probably... It's not the longest outstanding one, but it is... Um, here, here we go. It was first reported on May the 8th, 2019. Hmm. Or many, many years ago. Many, many. Many, just, many just, years ago. Just many, less than many, five many years. Before COVID. <laughs> yeah, back, back when commanders are playing with GTX 1070s as cutting-edge cards. Is that the number of buttons on them? 1070? No, 10 or 70. Yes. Still too um, many if it's 70. But but yes, I mean mainly it's for people using things like the Verpal Mongoose T fifty throttle, which has got about a million buttons on the left hand side. Or um, yeah, so so it allows you to bind them. I mean that completely threw me because obviously it changed all the binds files in the game. We won't yeah mention what kind of day I've had unbadgering that one. Um, because binds files are now four point one, not four point zero, even though the game is four point zero. Which is all very confusing. But anyway, yeah, I, I um I had to spend two days unbadgering keybinds. But um yeah, other than that, so what else was in the patch? Has anybody else had a, a look through? I mean a lot of these are Vulcarius related content. So um there were adjustments to the Titan threat calculation which resulted in the Taurus move not behaving correctly in solo instances. You don't do solo though, do you? Uh, well, it, well, bit of e bit of either, but the um, I haven't really noticed anything wrong with the Taurus move. Uh, like it, it at least well. So when you're when you're bombing the Titan, you you well you freeze the vents, you hit the core, and it does the Taurus. Like it, there's no I've not I've never seen it not do the Taurus. Uh, normally it does that if you annoy it enough, but for which it well, it was saying not some... behaving correctly. We don't know what correctly was. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what was wrong before. Like the, I mean, I know of one bug which is. But it's not related to the Taurus though. It's um, it's if you have too many commanders, if multiple commanders bomb uh, freeze the vents, then the core can get stuck. But that was we knew about that one from the start. All right. Well, the second one they said is fixed exposed text strings. Uh, that sounds like a new kind of underwear for Thargoid spy collector sabotage missions okay they adjusted titan turret projectiles so they no longer appear to lag they were hyperspacing turret projectiles previously um then there was um the fixed acoustic sync launcher hud indicator when used in gunner role while in multi-crew i'm not yet aware of it... anybody who's done multi-crew <laughs> yeah. but that's a good I, one I, I don't think I've ever seen multi-crew um, Titan attacking or Thargoids. So. Right, there's a challenge for our viewer and listener there. We want to see some video of you guys in multi-crew attacking a Titan and, with somebody and, in the gunner role firing yeah, caustic yeah. sink launchers. There we go. Yeah, me yeah, meaningfully. Yeah, meaningfully <laughs> so, like, in the name of science. Yeah. So apparently, meaninglessly. <laughs> yeah, apparently uh, night vision was stuffed when you were in a Titan's inner cloud in multi-crew. Uh, night vision is basically useless anyway when you're in a Titan cloud. Yeah, I don't know why you'd want to be in a night, Titan night, in a cloud in like, night vision like as in you, multi crew. <laughs> like, yeah. so as as you approach, you turn night vision on. You can kind of uh, so you're you're not you're outside the caustic area. You can kind of see all the little caustic generators, but as you get close, that range just starts dropping, and then you 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 just have Mark One eyeball for a while too. Uh, apparently, they fixed the FSD failure drop imminent being spammed for multi crew passengers. Somebody's obviously been doing a lot of multi-crew. Apparently the Brazilians yeah. are happy, brackets <clears throat> Portuguese, because the translation for Titan Drive component doesn't insult your mother anymore. Um, that would be, be good for the Brazilian League of Pilots, who are the... Yep, um, the, the, uh, my, yep the, they're the... Um, what was it? Not, yeah, the minor faction um, who kind of got stomped by Titan Tyrannus when it arrived. Apparently they fixed something to do with backface culling on launch tube membrane residue, which just sounds rude. Um, an abrupt lightning change on the lighting change on the Titan core when dealing damage to it. Titan discos are hereby cancelled. It says. Nope. It can it can spark when you get to around if you missile it down to eighty percent, you get some sparks flying. But I I don't think I really noticed the lighting problems. Yep, and um, something to do with um, Titan destroyed decals flipping everyone off or something. Uh, that's been fixed as well. Um, so yeah, that was <laughs> that was the extent of the patch. It was a nice smooth one from what I can tell. It just happened and things got fixed. Um, apparently, apparently there are reports of some SCO that is um, SCO. There's super supercharge overdrive super. 
super cruise overdrive audio is missing from some ships. So some ships through space instead of going all the way through space. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So yeah, that, that was, that was this update um, unexpected and, and quite good fun. Um, we don't know when the next one is coming. I think they're probably going to get a bit more news about what's what's coming up in a couple of weeks. I think it's two Thursdays time when the next, um, or two Wednesdays time when the next um, super frame shifty live thing. What do they call it these days? It's not frame shift live. It's oh, um, frontier unlocked. Yeah, um, you bend unblocked. Um, in in a couple of weeks, might well tell us about sort of some of the things that might be coming sometime in the future. Um, on to on to um, special effect. Here we go. We've got a photograph yeah. on screen of a very startled looking Dr. Mick. And Beautiful Tom. Time Don yes. yes. Um, <laughs> well, I did manage to forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards till I got the right expression on his face um, on, on the video. <laughs> uh, it was broadcast live. That was the red carpet. And he got ambushed by the two ladies that you see on the left-hand side there um, and, and asked him about it. Uh, <laughs> it's very typical, sort of unassuming Dr. Mick style. Um... Uh, yes, he, he sort of uh, enthused at them, and and then Tom grabbed the mic and um, interviewed him a little bit more as as well. But it was but it was lovely to see them. You see you see all these celebs and titans of gaming, whatever else, and then our Doctor Mick, uh, <laughs> waxing lyrical about the stuff that he does and, and being very modest about his own uh, his own achievements. Um, and then of course they got the award. Oh, it was about um, an hour and a half ago now. He actually had to go up, or well, maybe 45 minutes ago, had to go up and um, actually collect it and got his shiny trophy as well. Uh, all available on the BAFTA YouTube channel. If you want to watch uh, Dr. Mick, uh, go over after this show, not during the show because you'll miss things, to the BAFTA YouTube channel and you can actually see uh, Dr. Mick doing his thing and the, the prize acceptance as well. Uh, there was much cheering and applauding from this side of the screen and over in uh, the special effect offices, but yay, they got BAFTA! That's awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it really yeah. is. It really is awesome, and it means we all know a, a BAFTA award winner personally, which is double awesome. Especially yeah. given yeah. that you got it for. Or oh, actually, we know two uh, two now because don't don't didn't Elite get one for their music? I should hope so. Many years ago. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, I know they were. Oh, it was. It, here we go. Uh, they were nominated in 2014. Ah. Let's have a look. Uh, they were nominated in 2014 for a BAFTA Games Award. Mm-hmm. And um, then they. Oh, it was Golden Joysticks. They were nominated for. So they haven't won one, but they were nominated for a, a 2019 nominee for for BAFTAs. Oh, very good. What was the 2019 one? What game? Sorry? What game was the 2019 one? Well, yeah, I've taken it off screen now. We're yeah, really dangerous. <laughs> oh, was that late? Oh, in 2019? Apparently so, mm. yes. Very nice. And, of course, uh, Mr. Braben is a BAFTA fellow. Oh, yes. Um, I'm sure they won awards for their for their music. Um... Yeah, they probably did. Maybe just not, you know, those ones. Commander Aiden in the chat says sound design. Award for sound design? I thought I thought they'd got one for sound design somewhere. Certainly, um, let's have a look. They were nominated in 2016 for Elite Dangerous, Dangerous Horizons uh, and Elite Dangerous Beyond in 2018. I think they were nominated. And then, uh, let's, I'm just going through the list. Yeah. There was uh, the ones I can see are 2018 for Beyond and then uh, 2016 for Horizons. There we go. Anyway, um, so yes, well done them. Big round of applause. I haven't got the applause sound effect um, up at the moment. Um, uh, other than that, um, yeah, um, is it about time that we look at space news? Space news? Have we got any space news Space, space news? Oh, yeah, we get space, space news. news. We get three space newsies. Uh, I've got a button for it somewhere. I think it might be this one. Hang on a second. Space, 
Well, first up, first up this week, we were talking about it last week. Yeah. Was that everything, everything went dark? Yes. Depends on where you were, though. Well, in, in America, yes. Yeah. They've got, I in mean, bits of Canada. Yeah. Other people kind of saw bits of it going dark, but not like, not like that. Yeah. Uh, so apparently there were some stunning images. That there are. I'm just scrolling through them now. They're amazing. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a picture of uh, people with big cameras and um, what looks like a night sky, but it isn't. It's a day sky with a, an eclipse yeah. on it. Uh, lots of people in silly-ass glasses. Um, there's then a there's... few just scroll down a wee bit and you'll see some belters, some really nice ones. Uh, some, some hippies at Woodstock. Um... Uh, lots of people. Oh, that one with the that one with the um, that, that lady with the lamp. Thing. That's yeah, uh, Florence that's Nightingale nice. in America. Yeah, that one. <laughs> the lady with the lamp. Um, anyway, uh, there's there's one there. It's of, not a lamp. Um, it's an ice cream cone. Oh, it's an ice cream yeah. cone. Yeah. Uh, or oh, that that one there that shows the solar flares. Like we, the thing is, I think somebody commented on this. The rest of the world go wow an eclipse, and then elite dangerous players go yeah again seen it. Yeah, <laughs> seen, seen it hundreds name. of times. Yeah. Lined up my ship specially just to get that yeah. same shot. When there's two moons crashing together called rhubarb and custard, come back and talk to me then. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, but you can see the solar flares coming out the side of this one on the yeah, uh, and they're kind of purpley pinky color. For those of you looking in black and white like I am, they're not. Yeah, those those yes. are the pink ones. <laughs> no, they're grey like, and a bit more grey. I mean, technically, they're not. You know, it's because the the lights diffuse, the blue lights diffuse mm. through our atmosphere, so they're technically not that colour. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, but yes, there's some, yeah, um, some lovely pictures. Some lovely pictures there, and uh, ones. With, I mean, other parts of the world where there was a little bite taken out of the moon. Yeah, like that, one, that a... one with the clouds is fantastic. Look at that. Yeah. That's yeah I mean, dramatic. eerie, I think. I mean, the best description of what, what it's like when there is an eclipse like that on, because it, it goes dark. And, and there were there were also some annual animal behaviourists around wondering whether, you know, um, hut and truckers would go back to their nests in the middle of the day or start preparing for bed or <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Or walking about with their jammies on. Yes. Um, yeah, so I remember the one that was that we saw here in ninety. Oh, was it nineteen ninety nine? Is that talk about then? it being night time, isn't it? That, that set yeah, that's, that set me off. But yeah, there was a, an eclipse here that was pretty much a total eclipse, and that was pretty. That was twenty seventeen. No, no, a proper Ten... one back in about nineteen ninety nine. Oh right, okay. Yeah, that was that was really fancy. A party like it is. Hmm. Yeah. Um, OK, well, the next piece of space news is about one woman's battle to push Africa's space race. Yeah. yeah. I know a wee bit about this one if you want me to Yeah, but please, please do if you, if you are a resident look at it, expert. It looked quite interesting. Um, so what she's doing is she's part of a group who make... Um, they'll make maps up. So it's like kinda when, uh, when things happen, like, like the Moroccan earthquake they'll make like new maps of the area and point out things that, you know, so that rescue agencies know where to go and what to do and all that kind of thing. But they use a lot of satellite imagery. And what they're having to do just now is kind of big borrowing steel um, kind of uh, satellite images to help make these maps up to help people get rescued and things like that. But she's pushing for African countries to sort of club together, get their own satellites up, and kind of do it for themselves, and they reckon that it'll probably work better and end up costing less, if you know what I mean. Um, so this seems to be... To, to it was, start it was in African... the aftermath of the, the earthquake in Morocco, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So the, the plan is to, to kind of kickstart a, a kind of, not a space race, but an African in a space programme to get some satellites up and things like that as well, you know. And they've got a lot of kind of equatorial places, so it would make yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, these aren't could... government ones being used to target missiles and stuff at people. These are, yeah, earthquake no. zones, saving people's lives. It's the real good end of satellites, you know? Yeah, there are, there are, um, let these are owned by private companies who are, who will sell the imaging. So they'll sell the images and things like that, so you can buy images off them. And a lot of them have been doing kind of, you know, we'll give you, we can give you some free images since it's, to do with earthquake relief will give you free images, but they're quite limited in what they can get. And I think what they're saying is we need to be doing more for ourselves. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's all it, it, that, inc- incredibly worthy. You know what I mean? It 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 it, it feels like healthy. You know, they're, 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 yeah. the human right, the race on the right path and not doing the wrong thing like we're so. Yeah, it's kind of people want to take control of this thing and do it for themselves for better results. You know, and you think, yeah, why not? That's a yeah, absolutely, and, and strength to her arm. Does the the lady's name Marie? Yes. Yes. Marie Marie Macuati. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Right. This last article was about a digital telescope project awarded. Big numbers here. Three mm. million credits. Yeah, but wait till you see what they're going to do with the three oh, million credits. Oh, no, hang on. Let's just go away. Pop-ups. There we go. Wait till you see what they're going to do with the three million credits. What are they going to do with the three credits. million credits? They are going to... Now, where did I see it? They are going to develop a telescope with the aim of detecting the explosions of stars and merging of black holes in real time. Now, remember, real time is about relatives in space. In um, real time, as we see it, yes. In real time, as we see it, not in real time, as it happens at its uh, at its location. Yeah. Um, so this is what they're going to this is what they're going to build up, and they've just been given three million quid. I don't know how far three million quid's actually going to go. But, um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's about know, a week. Yeah. And they're saying it's they're they're kind of putting it out as being transformational. It's going to be make a huge difference, apparently. Oh yeah. There we go. Well, it's um, the La Palma Observatory over in the um, um, Canary Islands, is it... isn't it? Yes. But run, funded and run by Warwick University. Yeah, I thought we were going to see Warwick Davis for a minute. Well, Warwick Davis. Is... <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he's only a small estate his... there. Yeah. He's in his wallet. You know, the thing he's, he's opened his wallet. Yeah. All, those, all those. What's that quiz he runs? Um, yeah. Oh, I don't know. It'd be selling off his Star Wars toys oh, that uh, Luke Skywalker gave him. Improbable or something? No, that's the wrong one. Um, all right. Well, that's that's uh, our, our real world space news for this yeah, week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure we've got anything else there. So, um, uh, run audio. Ch- Hang on a second. Dun, 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 dun. When you don't know where to get more space news, 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 space news. Do we have a word mm-hmm. of the week? Yes, we do. And the word of the week this week is jargoggle. And We've what does that, that mean? It means to obscure oh, oh. or confuse things. But Valkarius says we've had that one before. No, we we've haven't. Had that. Yeah, we have. No, we yeah, haven't. We have. You're just we, trying we... to jargoggle me. <laughs> yes. I'm sure we've had jargoggle before. No, no, we haven't had jargoggle before. You're just a pair of... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's go on, you pair yeah, of muffin no, wallopers. Have... So it, it was it was between Flim Flam and Mavic. We had Jogogle. I I don't believe either <laughs> one of you. Can you use it in a sentence, please? Ah, uh, yeah, quickly before this guy stops tightening. The cubicle stage attacking flow mopping guys' nose, throat, and eyes. Jack goggled his attempts to clean the place. And for those interested, the spelling and the meaning is now on the headline, which makes it official. Yeah, or you, or you could get back a year. <laughs> well, your description last time was as the party at Rampage's house got into full swing, all of the ship keys became jar goggled in the bowl. Oh, yes, I believe they went. <laughs> From the 3rd of I, August, I, 2023. Oh, man. Uh, I, I, I do apologise. <laughs> I just... I, I, you come on here, causing it blurted, trouble. It seems... Quick, quick. Bring, a, bring another one up. <laughs> try try to just go, go people and... No, it was such a good word, it needed saying twice. Yes. yes. I'm anyway, glad someone's on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is why we invite, you know, Volcarius. He is this this seam finder general. You know, he's got oh. special, he's got a special hat and everything. I have you have it. See, yeah. it's not just well, a matter of finding a word. You want to find a word that's a bit either has a rude sounding word or has a rude meaning. I, I kind of created a seam. But I didn't really remove a seam. <laughs> I suppose. I mean, I removed a continuity error, but I created so much worse. <laughs> oh no, no! This is this is one hundred percent Hutton. You you have you have fit in perfectly there. We are hun- seamless. Yes, we are always oh, seamless. 
Yeah. I'm not doing well looking at... Yeah. I mean, they go for... You see things here and it goes, 20 unused English words, and you go, I've used all of them this week. <laughs> <laughs> and it just... I think it depends where you are, you know? Well, I mean, you could have gone, with, you gone with Arsa Panic. Oh, Arsa Panic would have been a good one, Arsa yeah. Panic, um, which is a, a, a description of a creature known to local tribes as the Arsa Panic, by spreading their legs and so stretching the largeness of their skins, mm-hmm. they've been seen to fly 30 or 40 yards. It's another name for the Flying Squirrel. There's that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, com- so Flying Squirrels are com- Arsa Panic? Compra-bludidated. Oh, I want to know what Compra-bludidated is. Yep. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Or well, how how about bum bailiff? <laughs> Described in 1755 as a bailiff of the meanest kind. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, or a clatterfart. Yeah. yeah, I remember contrafibularity. <laughs> that's that's because. Yep. Yeah, exactly. There he is. He's on it like a shot. Well, I, I think uh, uh, I think clatterfart is a good one, for, obviously, for what just happened. Because a clatterfart is someone who will disclose any light secret. In other words, uh, a blabbermouth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dropping. Oh, there's it. there's one there. I've heard I've heard it before. And I'm trying to remember where it is. Back an alien. Oh, back an alien. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a Cecil word. That one. I'm sure I've heard that it's in like definitely a, a, a Cecil word. Used it it's, a lot uh, of times it... describing the empire. No, I've used it in... I've heard it in, like, a poem or something, like something back in Alien, and then on a whatever it was. Oh. Or how about a haboob? A haboob. That's a, that's a dead meat GF word, a, a haboob. <laughs> yes. Ha-boob. Which apparently is a blustering, blowing dry wind. Yes. Oh, I've found one now that's got loads. Oh, there's Beano. A noisy festive party or celebration. Each year the Guild of Freeman met for a grand for a great Beano in the Guild Hall. <laughs> yes. Ah uh, now I'll find a good list here. I'm gonna I'm gonna bookmark this one actually. And keep it. Because <laughs> the book's done now, you know that. The book Was well, I found a Scottish one. Yes. Per shitty. Oh yeah, per shitty, yeah. Per yeah. shitty. I found I found one that may or may not be Scottish. It's got the sound of being Scottish. A blatherskite. Oh, blatherskites! Yes, sir. That's a great yes. word. I this, use that. I use that word. That should be used about you, a person who talks at great length without making much sense. <laughs> yep, <laughs> I'm going to yes. own that one. I'm 100 going to own one, that one. Yes, yeah. that one lives just north of Blatteroon, which we've definitely had before. Yes, yeah, we, that was that was that was the uh, one of the very early ones. Um, yes, the fifth, I think. It was like after Quanked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bloviate, yes. Uh, anywho, uh, shall we continue? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, let's carry on you, with the words. Are you sure? Because look what's coming next. And I want to, I want to distance myself for this one. I never wrote this one. Somebody I else ju- wrote this one. I just want to get it over with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Might as well. It's like pull the plaster off, isn't it? Ah, <sighs> what do you call an advert working on the new overcharged frame shift driving a fireproof asbestos suit? Jeff. Jeff. Itchy. Nope. Yeah, or... Scratchy. No, a oh. fire retardant vark. A retire fire retard vark? <laughs> oh, dear. I wonder oh. who... Hard vark! Hard vark! And now, it's flossy. I wonder, has the tune changed? Because this button I've got here, by the way, is supposed to change the sound every single week. And it could be coincidence. It's one of those flip a coin 50 times. You shouldn't be surprised when you end up with 50 heads. But um, it, we'll see. Eddie, are you ready, Flossie? I'm ready. When the universe is in trouble, bug infestations in the bubble, you're... Home stations burn rubble. What on earth can we do now? Interstellar initiatives. Let Flossie tell you what She's it is. Two. Then you can get Let's involved get with this. Story. You should listen to what Flossie says. Interstellar initiatives. Flossie tells us what she thinks it is. Then you Now you should listen to what Lassie says. Who 
Hello, Flossie here with this week's CG News. And after that wonderful long intro, I'm afraid there are no CGs this week. <laughs> Hopefully next week. Bye. Flossie told you what to do. Seamless. Seamless. Our oh, crevice has gone missing. Reading. <laughs> Our well, crevice is absent. That. <laughs> Unless he was actually looking at that piece of the script as you were typing in just seconds ago. <laughs> Yo, what was the blabber mouth again? Oh, no. Oh. It, in, in Litho's defence, it's not red. Yeah, yes, it wasn't it, coloured. It's that's also why not red to spotted. me either. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why you didn't it's, read it out. Yeah, it's not red. That's why I didn't read it. <laughs> So, after that extremely long and arduous listen that was flossy CG news, let's move on to Galnet News with Beetlejuice and Wotherspoon. Galnet News Digest, 11th of April, 3310. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, there's no news this week. Hopefully next week. And that's this week's Galnet News. Hutton Truckers. You do the Hutton Run so we don't have to. Are we nearly there yet? Are we? Thank you very much to uh, Beetle Jude and Wotherspoon, who are currently somewhere still on the Hutton Run trying to get that video footage. But now, dun 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 dun, dun are you ready, Amelia? Uh, I was born ready. Ah, see, this bit is coloured in, and it has got your name at the front of it. I'm just check, just checking in advance. I haven't read it in advance. I hope it's a good one. Um, <laughs> it might be. It could be. The pictures are certainly... I do not know what Mr. Dustybot and his camera were doing earlier. They are psychedelic. Anyway, um, here we go. Ooh, psychedelic. It's Amelia Hawke with this week's Galnet Rares Digest. You are about to listen to Amelia Hawk. She tries all the galaxy's most dangerous rare items, so you don't have to. T. For as long as there have been civilized people, those civilised people have drunk tea. Beginning in China as a medicinal drink and then spreading to the most remote areas of old earth and then to the farthest reaches of the galaxy, tea has gone where humans have. The people of China had it fresh and green. In Japan there was an elaborate ceremony. The Russians had it in a glass with a slice of lemon. From Turkey to India, they liked black tea brewed so strong and sweet that you could stand a spoon up in it. The Americans threw theirs in the harbour and had coffee instead. Well, well, until the Aboot Wars, when Canada invaded and made tea drinking a punishment for laughing at their accent. Then there were the British. Their interpretation of tea involved adding sugar and milk to black tea. 
This was supplemented with iced cakes, tiny sandwiches with the crust cut off, and warm scones with clotted cream and jam. So as to get the conversation started with the age-old question of which goes on the scone and in what order. First there was afternoon tea, and then there was high tea. As the pace of life increased and space travel became a part of everyday life, the tradition has all but died out. But in one corner of the galaxy, the high tea ritual is alive and well. In a little known corner of the Machuca system, the harsh environment of planet B1 is home to some caves. And those caves are, in turn, home to a single gargantuan fungus which feeds from a concentration of minerals found nearby. It appears to be a yellow green in colour with large flat caps which resemble leaves. Every year some of the new growth is harvested before being taken to Hunziker holdings for processing. Here the crop is put through a series of soaks and chemical processes to remove harmful substances such as the arsenic which gives the mycelium its green colour. When toxins reach a safe level, the resulting mulch is dried, chopped and finely ground to produce the tea we know, before being shipped up to Brandenstein Port. At first glance, Machucus is an unlikely place for high tea. Most of its planets and all three of its stations are primarily concerned with mining and refining of various metals and minerals, but Brandenstein Port is something special among mining stations. From the outside, it's an unremarkable looking extraction hub, but the inside tells a different story. Beautiful wooden wall panels and art deco wall lights bathe the social hub in a diffused warm light. The smell of baked goods and tea wafts through the vents. The maitre d' in bow tie and tails greets me with an archaic accent that I can't quite place, and I'm shown to my table. I peruse the menu, but I already know what I'm here for. Machuca's high tea, which is only served at 4pm local time. Around me, I can see local miners decked out in their finery chatting amiably. A tourist couple who turn up in shorts and t-shirt are ushered into a side room and appear moments later like extras from an Agatha Christie novel. The dress code is very strict. On the wall, an archaic timepiece chimes four o'clock and an army of waiters and waitresses emerge from the kitchen bearing silver teapots, tiered cake stands, groaning with pastries, fancies and tiny little sandwiches. Jam, butter, cream and some other delicious smelling things I can't readily identify are all placed on my table. There is a lot of food here for just one person having one pot of tea and I'm glad I took the decision to skip lunch so I can manage. I take a sip and although I like black tea this is a little bitter for me so I use the silver tongs and drop in a sugar cube. Mmm, better. The bitterness is passed and the tea has an earthy, slightly savoury, delicious umami flavour. As it goes down I'm left with a slight warmth at the back of my throat, much the same as you get from ginger or chilli. An attentive waiter pours me a second cup and I feel my lips starting to tingle as I imbibe my second cup. From there a comforting numbness spreads throughout my body. My legs seem to melt and stretch out under the table until they're about eight feet long. I look at the zebra sitting at the table next to me but he's no help. You see, that's the thing about Machuca's high tea. It's, it's high tea for two reasons. It's served as high tea, but it's also tea that gets you high. The washing process makes it safe to drink, but th there are still some potent compounds in there. So be careful where and when you drink this stuff. I keep drinking to appear normal and hoping that my legs will sort themselves out. Oh, hell's teeth! The walls are breathing when I breathe. Uh, I'm on the verge of panic when I notice a large flightless bird waddle across my table in a way that delights and reassures me. 
it, it says something in, in soothing tones and hands me a sandwich. Well, it would be rude to refuse. I can never remember if penguins are aggressive or not, so I accept. After another sandwich and a, and a sausage roll, the soothing sounds start to make sense. You have to eat something, and then you'll feel better, it says. Well, I don't need to be told twice. I start in on the sandwiches full of green stuff and move to on, onto some brightly coloured, dainty looking little tea cakes. <sighs> things, things are normalising now, so, so I keep eating and eating and eating. When I look around, the, the zebra is a, a burly miner with drool down the front of her twin set and is only now starting in on her table full of delights. The monochrome blue vision is gone and the sweats are easing off. The, wall, the walls are just walls and the timepiece chimes for 7 p.m. 7 p.m.? Has it really been three hours? I look at the empty food plates and I feel sick at how much I've eaten. This is Amelia Hawke reporting for the Galnet Rares Digest and I'm off to see if I can steal that one remaining French fancy while the purple unicorn isn't watching. So you don't have to. Oh, actually, I'm, I might just undo my belt and have a mini siesta here at my table. I like tea. <laughs> yeah, I like, I, I like tea. I like tea. I like tea. I mean, that, <laughs> just looking through the pictures there, that purple unicorn was, I mean, obviously we, we, yeah. we've wired oh, yeah. up your optic nerve to, or something. I haven't seen the pictures yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I tell you what, some of those pictures are pretty trippy. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I there's, like the one there's one that's gone up at the moment with the, uh, the tea candle trippy. pouring into the teapot. Yeah. yeah. There's definitely there's one of there's one of you uh, there, there we go Alice in Wonderland special that, yeah that's <laughs> Alice in Wonderland special. yeah that's that's probably the trippiest in Amelia's yeah. case no we, there's a there's another you know one. what is trippy I'm wearing frills yeah, yeah. this one the, this exactly. one oh my, oh my god <laughs> there's one coming up with really freaky eyes you need to yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so it's this one's yeah. then, then you got then you got you, you and you and Steve harvesting the mushrooms with uh, with yeah. uh, I don't know why Mooncake's not wearing a, a spacesuit. Yeah, though. Mooncake doesn't need a spacesuit. No, Mooncake. no Mooncake's yeah. mortal. Yeah, yeah, and then you, got, you got Mooncake sitting on some mushrooms. They'd look suspiciously like those ones you harvest off planet surfaces. You know, the um, when yeah. you're <coughs> doing exobiology. Well, the others ones you harvest off planet surfaces. That looks like someone a greater as well. Yeah, and, and this is before you started. I <laughs> oh, suspect. I like that hair. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, mm. that, it's very fancy. Yeah, yeah. look at. Quite James, a nice James as well. That looks like James Bond. And in the there's the yeah, look at that. Look at the eyes. <laughs> look at those eyes. And the penguin. And What's the queen as, doing as, in the corner? What What is the queen Cucum... doing? Oh, they are the queen. <laughs> oh, as, there's as, the zebra. And all as your cucumber, plates. as cucumber bandersnatch would say, penguin. Yeah, a penguin. penguin. Yes. Yes. And your purple unicorn. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> You look smashed. You look absolutely <laughs> smashed. The unicorn look, looks smashed. Look at, that, look at that teapot on the dresser at the side as well. That is beautiful. That is a hell of a teapot. Oh, spacesuit. Love that spacesuit. Yeah, don't know if you're walking yeah. in or walking out there. That's my favourite spacesuit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah, and there's oh, a yeah, there teapot it where it's the tea's pouring into the teapot. Yep. From the handle. From, From the, the handle, handle of the yes. teapot. <laughs> And you appear to be a cyborg in that one as well. So you were clearly off your face. What's it? Yes. <laughs> Let's say face. Mets. Yes, off, yeah. off your off your rocker. There we go on, no, on that one. But um, you're definitely on some kind of meds. Nice. Any, any, anyway, yes, on on that. Oh my goodness, you and that teacup. Just just oh dear. Anyway, well look, um, lace. Dusty yeah. got that done himself. Yeah, oh, that is a hell of a hat. I don't There's care. A... I don't care oh, what yeah. anyone says. That's a hell of a. That, that's straight the... out of My Fair Lady somewhere, isn't it? Or uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. there was there was a pingling on the table as well. Yeah. Yep. I don't know what the thing sitting in the left was. 
Oh, well, we'll have to let knowing. it go, go around again. Well, I'll leave, them, I'll leave them looping. Short-nosed aardvark. <coughs> yes. A short, a short-nosed aardvark, yes. Uh, right, well, look, um, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. Now, obviously, before we go, uh, we do need to see if there's anybody who needs raiding. Whoever's left in the show, we haven't scared off with whatever it is we've been doing. Um, uh, to see who might be... We did get raided last week, by the way. 90 people raided us after we finished. <laughs> How long did this stay for? No, it was after We'd we finished. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, everybody, everybody got bored of listening to uh, to Drew Wagar, and he very kindly uh, sent them all our way. Um, unfortunately, it was after we finished, just as we raided the other ones. So they turned up on us after we'd raided the other lot. Um, so, um, and then... incidentally, uh, did you want to hear about the war this week? <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness gracious me! I'm so sorry. <laughs> there we go. We've it's inserted kind of a scene. Kind of go... we, no, we spoke so much. We spoke so much about Thargoids. Um, no, it yes, that I, I forgot about the actual Oya. Oya, what's going on at Oya? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I was going to go into a little bit of um, a little bit of strategy in the, but I could skip it if you. Uh, no, if, just, just you, we, need, we need, the, we need the, uh, the this oh, week. We do, yeah. It was a very interesting week at Oya. Uh, if you remember, uh, plan A was to rush down that Titan um, and well, clearing enough alerts so that we can have another go at the Spire was plan B, not plan A. That was plan B. Right. Um, and uh, naturally, many squadrons of commanders all got together and were like, right now, plan B, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of ignored the Titan, went straight for the alerts. Um, but they did, it began this absolute scurry funge of all the alerts, which is very impressive. Um, of course, all the um, all the Galnet Ballyhoo was some humbuggery about hunting the Orphruses again, which it works gradually, um, if that's what you like doing. Um, but yeah, the for alerts, the real work workhorse is the, uh, the research teams, um, so the research limpets. Um, and then bombarding the rescue mega ships with the cargo. Um, Twenty-eight of the thirty alerts were stopped. Um, so that's quite a lot. That actually powered us past the attack, kind of giving us a two-week delay, and past the massive blunder um, of making the spire vulnerable uh, prematurely, and actually turned the whole thing into a one-week delay. Um, so that was very good. Uh, for a, yeah, the uh, a little bit of strategy there. Um, we ha it had seven control systems to go. Um, one of them's a spire, and we need that spire to clear all the others. Um, because if you remember, that's because the spire gives percentage progress for ten systems. Um, but the um, the spire is not actually the last system. It's the fourth last. It's position four uh, from the Titan. Um, so, in general, that means we need to be careful with how much we clear. Um, so, with 30 alerts, the minimum would be 20, because um, then the Spire could let us clear the other 10 before the attack. Um, and then we'll be back to where we were a couple of weeks ago, like a two-week delay. Um, but, <clears throat> um, so, but because the Spire being in fourth, it's got that buffer of three systems. Uh, we could have cleared up to three more alerts, um, so like 23 in total. Um, which would have let us pick away a few more control systems and we leave the Titan with four and perhaps be able to attack it. So that's kind of like a one or two week delay depending on what commanders want to do. Um, over 23, there's kind of a problem um, depending on your goal um, because now our next systems attack will include the Spire, um, which would lower the Titan resistance more, but it'll also leave behind some really, really tough systems. Um, and... Where, which we could do, but I know that Stellar Nebula Project have been absolutely amazing around um, Maelstrom Oya. Um, I know they really want their systems back, um, like Yoto, um, one of the strongest systems there is. Um, so the uh, the only salvation there beyond 23 is if we keep going to 27, um, which, as I said, would force the problem away, and it would reach. All, we would just reach all the way to Yoto this week. Which is exactly what happened. We actually had 28. So, and um, that's very good. All the research bombs are also all ready. Uh, it's, some, it's about 100k of cargo, something like that. Saturn carriers just ready for this. The final spire, it's getting torn apart right now. That's at Cephi Sector XO-AB3. That's Cephi Sector X-Ray Oscar-Alpha Bravo 3. Um, it'll need some help getting it to 85%. Um, so 
That's Orthrus kill teams. It means on foot sabotage missions, of course, so which you can get from the Sun Wen system and um, from the rescue mega ship. And of course, you will need the Odyssey expansion. So go buy Odyssey. Cool. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Oh, that's it. Well, I, you, I don't know whether you noticed at all, but um, we did actually put up a mi uh, an image there of you briefing the uh, the, the room there <laughs> nice. about no, Plan no. B. Um, oh, yeah, yeah I, had, I didn't. It's on the other screen, but I see it now. <laughs> yeah, uh, see, that's you briefing a, a room full of pilots ready ready for some kind of invasion. I, I may well be green screening that bit behind you and using it in future weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With something. I don't know what the something is, but probably Thargoids in the background or, or something. Because I uh, uh, plan... It sort of says plan B. There's a seam between the P and LAN B bit. <laughs> yeah, um, it, yes. It, I noticed it isn't very good with text. Um, that's kind of unfortunate. It's not very what? Uh, good, not very good with text. Um, it, oh, it, no, no. It, well, it's okay, never it, good with text. I suppose on... I suppose on this, well, uh, it's kind of uncanny valley text. Like uh, on the scheme of things, like, it's actually really good with text if you think about it. But the uh, it's just slightly imperfect. So uh, yes, it, it's enough imperfect that it's <laughs> yes. bleeding obvious. But um, yeah, yeah, uh, I've, as, I've as tried a... getting Dusty. I mean, Dusty's spelling is is terrible. I mean, we we let him out. He's really good at drawing pictures, but uh, he was hallucinating a bit. But... Unfortunately, I started with Amelia's article, and <clears throat> because it contained in... hallucinating images. Then everything that came oh, out yeah. afterwards, it started hallucinating, um, and I had well, to uh, step as, away um, from the Machucos high tea. Okay, as um, Aiden says, Flan B. Flan B. Yes, <laughs> mm, Flan, the Phantom Flan Flinger of Old London Town, or was it the old Raspberry Blower of Old London Town? I think that was the one, wasn't it? The old. Uh, uh, it was the Raspberry Blower, the Phantom Flan Flinger. Was, it was this? Uh, was that Monty Python? Oh no, no. The the uh, raspberry blower was um, the two Ronnies. Two Ronnies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. And the Phantom Flan Flinger was Tiz was. It was yes. But um tush. Yes. It is not anymore, but it was. Um, okay. Well, uh, uh, Flossie, I'm sorry you didn't have much to say this week, but I'm going to blame the Pilots Federation for not giving you a um, a thing to talk yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. No but we did, the thing is, I, I was wondering whether the magic button would work, and and you know the sense of humour that's in this control deck seemed to work with the exceedingly long intro, just this week when all the previous weeks it's been doing the <clears> um, the other song. Yeah, it seems to do that every time I've not got much there. I get the long intro. <laughs> yeah, but we love the intro song. <laughs> I do. I love that one. Yes, the Definitely Interstellar that Initiatives that do whatever yeah. Flossie says, which this week <laughs> is absolutely <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Buck she. I like those. I, I always, I always like the long version of that with the um, whoever's in the background saying, "We'll do what she tells us." <laughs> yeah, I might have that one. Oh, that uh, yeah, yes. that one. Yeah, <laughs> that was she another good one. She can have you killed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's in there. That's in there. It is yep. in that one. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's two. It's two minutes in the, the hour. Now, in in honour of Amelia's last bit of broadcast, I think we might have to go and see the emulated penguin. The rather scarily eyed, psychedelic emulated penguin that was um, on the screen earlier. So we're going to go and do that in a minute. So if you are listening to the show, there's two things. One, there's a warning that we don't know whether Amelia is going to be loud this week or not. But if oh, she yes, is, you are going to be loud. So <laughs> for the benefit of those people who haven't tuned in very often or when Amelia has been very quiet on a particular week... Um, not immediately after this, but after I've said the next bit, Amelia's going to be very loud. Which means if you've got earpieces in, or you've got your subwoofer turned up loud, or stuff like that, um, I recommend just moving it away from your ears just a little bit. Um, then at the end of that, there'll be some credits. Whether they're working or not, we have absolutely no idea. And at the end of the credits, we're going to go and raid the emulated penguin. So do hang around and uh, drop in on the emulated penguin and uh, say hi. And um, remember to behave yourselves. And um, if this week, uh, don't catch fire. Just a quick glance at the hut and run table. Have there been any more since we've been on air? Let's have a quick glance at the last seven days. No, we've still got one hour, four minutes and 46 seconds as the leading time. <coughs> no, no, the other one doesn't <laughs> count. Vulcarius, the 52 minutes and 31 so, seconds is not oh, legit. So so SEOs count, but Thargoids don't. What is this? What is this? Yep, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely it, it's an applaudable effort, but but it was not done properly in Super Cruise through the whole thing. Without 
other shenanigans happening. I mean, it was it's to be applauded. But um, so, yes, the, the fastest time to Hutton is actually about two minutes, and that was a self-destruct. Um, Volcarius was 52 minutes, 31 seconds by using a Thargoid. And then Delrin is one hour, four minutes, 46 seconds using the new supercharged frameshift drive, which must have been a mission to do that. Right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. We are going to be back next week. Um, Litho, are you in the country next week? Next week, I am not available for the show. I'm in the country, but I'm out at a comedy gig. Ooh. Ooh. Well, in one cheap. section. Enjoy yourself um, next week in that case. So we won't see you. We will see everybody else. Valkarius, obviously, um, I'm going to set this up as a proper image with your own proper section, so I'm not going to forget as well of your briefing on the Thargoids. Um, but if you're available, great, come and join us. If not, don't worry, but it's lovely having you here. Uh, thank you to Flossie, the Apology Officer, to Amelia, um, to Litho Breaker, to our audience. And uh, here we go with the magic button for the end of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the show. Everyone's buggered off now, so why don't you bugger off too?